Hello everyone, here is Muhammad Imran. In my previous lecture, I introduced what is new criticism. We also discussed in detail what kind of interpretive approaches existed before the arrival of new criticism. In this lecture, we will focus on practical criticism. So, new criticism is based on practical criticism. Let's begin our today's lecture. Practical criticism is the close formal analysis of a literary text. So, what is a practical criticism? When you are analyzing a literary work formally or close formal analysis of a literary work and you do not refer to its outside context including the author and historical period. So, you are involved in a practical criticism when you are doing a close formal analysis of a literary work but you do not refer to any social political background of the author and you do not refer to uh, the historical period of the time okay in which this work was produced so then you are involved in a practical criticism right the name practical criticism is given by I. A. Richards when he took up the work of Eliot's right at the University of Cambridge. He emphasized a focus on the text as a self-contained work and a complete refusal of outside information. So it was I. A. Richards okay with him the practical criticism began when he took Eliot's work at the University of Cambridge and he focuses on the text itself right and what did he do he refused to study outside of information of the text for example social and political background right so intention of the author so he like uh, left them out, right? So, Richards asked his student to interpret poems without any knowledge of, the, of their author or historical context and with no concern for the role of the reader. So, he says forget about the readers and forget about the author historical context and the author intention. He asked from his student, he gave them poem, right? And without having the knowledge, right, of that point, of the author, or without having the knowledge of historical context, he asked him to analyze the text, right? So that was the beginning of practical criticism. So practical criticism was further developed by William Anson. So the first man was Richardson, and then later on we, we can see William Anson. Fine? Now, on this slide, we will discuss the new criticism. What Richards and Anson outline as practical criticism resonated strongly with an American school of thought that was equally focused on poetry and desired to center critical attentions on the text alone. So, there was also, right, American school of thought. And it was also equally focusing, focusing on the text alone. So, during the 1930s, a group of poets and academics including John Creve, Ransom, Cleave, Brooke and Robert Spence Warners developed the idea of practical criticisms in an American context. So, this practical criticism was developed in an American context now, although they did not name themselves as such immediately they are the critic we now call new critics. So I told you that uh, new criticism is based on practical criticism. So when, when, the new, when the practical criticism arrived to America and there were some scholars, I, I named them like uh, uh, Crew Ransom was there, and Clint was there, Brooks was there, Robert was there. So these were like American and they adopt practical criticisms in American context. So although they did not name themselves as such immediately, they are the critic. Now we call them new critics. So a name 
they eventually gave themselves why ransoms the new criticisms in 1941 later on we see they also called themselves the new critics immediately they did not call themselves new critics but later on we can see that uh, through ransoms they had the new criticism 1941 existing optics outside of author like the practical critics the new critics consider the value of the text to exist outside of author so because i told you that new criticism is based on practical criticism so the new critics also thought that a text should be study outside of the author intention or reader or context their most influential text is brook and warner's understanding poetry 1938 in which the author argue that poetry has its own unique literary language right so because the language of a poetry is different that's why they they call they they they, they differentiate it from everyday life situation so the task of the student or critic is to uh, this this first this language right capturing the spirit of the original so for example one should avoid paraphrasing because putting a poem in non literary language would be to move away from its special literary properties so when you paraphrase a poem so you paraphrase a poem in everyday language then you are moving away from the literary properties of a poem of a text then the text does not remain a literary text that's what the new critics think so this is very interesting when they say that the task of the student or critic is to decipher this language capturing the spirit of the original so for example one should avoid paraphrasing because putting a poem in a non literary language would be to move away from its special literary properties on the last slide we will present a key idea new criticism is the practice following from practical criticism as i told you that new criticism is based on practical criticism so of analyzing the specific literary qualities of a given piece of literature outside specific authorial or historical context so both practical criticism and new criticism analyze a text a literary text but the focus is only on the text they do not give any reference to outside of the text for example authorial uh, intention or historical context right so the focus is where the focus is on the text alone this is new criticism so thank you so much i hope you got the basic concept of new criticism and practical criticism we will have more lecture in the subject literary theories so please keep watching and enjoy learning with mohammad imran Don't forget to subscribe and like the channel. Thank you so much.